Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome back to another sunset safari here. You live with us here at Amakala Private Game Reserve here in the Eastern Cape, where we are overlooking the gorgeous, gorgeous lands. Hello, hello everybody and welcome, welcome. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera. Together we are going to be your eyes and ears for this afternoon. As we uh, oh, look for some animals here. It's a lovely, lovely day. Still, uh, clear skies. There are clouds in the distance, but not too many. The wind is uh, nice blowing as it usually does. Nothing has changed. We are here where our lions were this morning, so we're having a quick scan here. And uh, please do remember that this is a live and interactive show. So please ask questions, ask questions, make some comments. It applies to you too, kids, please. We like to hear from the kids as well. And uh, you can do so by going onto our app, our Wild Earth app, where you can register to make some comments or ask questions, get involved in the conversation. You can do the same on YouTube. There is also a comment section there where you can ask questions, make some comments, as well as Twitter. As long as you are using our hashtag Wild Earth tag on Twitter, you will be involved and not left out. So please do go ahead. If this is the first time you are tuning in, Go and do so, and you can ask questions, make some comments. We love to hear from you. So it's just sitting here, and uh, I do love to come up to a high spot, as I always say, and uh, have a quick scan. It Oh, Luca, that's a good question. I like a, I like a bit of both, you know. I like the, the slightly cold, overcast weather with no wind, preferably. And then and this type of weather as well. Lovely sunny day, preferably no wind. <laughs> and uh, maybe a little bit of clouds to make a beautiful sunset. Other than that, I don't really have any others. No, nice cool day, overcast, but not too cold. Those days will be coming as uh, we are getting closer and closer to our winter. So we will have a fair amount of cool days, but then we will also have a fair amount of cold, cold days. Now, we are not alone on our sunset safari this afternoon. So joining us up at Juma, we have Chad and Panda. And then we will have Cedric. So, yeah, Cedric and Paul on Wendy. Chad and Panda will be on Cedric. Rusty. Sorry, not Cedric. <laughs> Rusty, not Cedric. I'm looking at Cedric's name, and I don't know, for some reason, I had to say it. A bit of misconfusion. Stephen and Paul and Wendy, sorry. I'm definitely not doing well with my introductions this morning, afternoon. And I wanted to say morning now. Oh, my goodness. Take a deep breath. There seem to be an awful lot of crows making a noise here in this area. And uh, we know that our lions were on a carcass or on a kill here yesterday. Now, when we came here this morning, we saw the crows, but they were all sitting on one tree, and they weren't really on the floor like they should be, you know, picking off bits of leftovers. So I'm not too sure what's going on, and our lions are not here either. Well, they could be. They could be have moved further into the bushes. All right, let's see what Mother Nature has in store for us. Let's have a look at the weather.
Good afternoon, good afternoon to everybody watching. Welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands, where we found some lions already. Also, a very warm welcome to all the kids. My name's Chad Hobson. I'm going to be the naturalist this afternoon. On camera, we got Panda. And uh, quite excited to be on drive out here at Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands. Um, Hopefully we can find uh, very exciting things for everybody watching today and especially those kids that are sitting at home watching. So we have come down to a water hole not too far from the camp where we found these three lions that have been spending quite a bit of time um, in the last couple of days around Juma and I think Steve might be a little bit upset that I might have won the the bet last night and saying that these lions wouldn't go anywhere. And they did kill something two nights ago. Uh, we're not 100% sure uh, what it was, but the, the last 24 hours they literally have not moved. All they've done is move from the water to the shade. And you saw there the one lioness just jumped back up onto the bank uh, to just go and find some shade. Thanks very much, Sandy Franklin. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, very excited to be out here at Juma. We do have Cedric uh, on the back of the vehicle. He's just taking his uh, afternoon off just to relax a little bit on the back. There he is. <laughs> I think he's uh, quite happy to be just sitting at the back relaxing and making sure that I do a great job. He's taught me some amazing things in the last two days, so hopefully I'll be able to teach everybody at home a few amazing things over the, the next couple of weeks. But these are lions being lions. I mean, lions often after making a kill, they can sleep for 24 or 36 hours um, just re relaxing, trying to digest that food. And you'll often find that lions will move towards water after they've killed something. It often will help with digestion. Um, so they can rest and drink water, help with digestion. And then once they do get a little bit more hungry, they can then move on. Shiv, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, yeah, like I've said, uh, I'm very excited to be out here at Juma. And it's a fantastic afternoon. It's probably somewhere around 35 or 36 degrees Celsius. So I think the, the predators might be resting a little bit. There might be chances of maybe some elephants or buffaloes coming down to one of the water holes that we have here on Juma. But I'll definitely be doing a little bit of exploring um, this afternoon. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
But uh, I do think we, we're probably not going to spend too much time um, sitting here with these lines. Um, it's a, a very good chance that they're not going to be doing too much in the, the next little while before that sun does start to set a little bit later on. But because they are quite close to camp, it's definitely worthwhile popping past um, later on on our way back home to see if these lines have maybe started to move. But I'll definitely be in contact with Steve, who's going to be out and about shortly, and see maybe one of us will, will pop past, just depending on what else happens. I mean, after all, this is the African bush, and you never know what's around the next corner. So really looking forward to getting out there and exploring. Also just a reminder to please send through your questions and comments. You can do so on X using the hashtag Wild Earth or you can do so on our website. Have a look. Have a look at this. Beautiful, the big male white rhino. Now, for those of you wondering at home, I can really ask, I can really see you confused as to why we call it a white rhino. Well, the reason why we call it a white rhino is. If you look towards his mouth, you'll see that it's very wide. Very, very wide. And uh, in Dutch, they called wit, sorry, not wit, wit mond renoster, which means a wide mouthed. Wide mouthed, we call them the square lipped, because they have these very, very wide mouths. Very good, very useful for plowing grass and not plowing, mowing. And uh, this is your very well-oiled lawn mower. The best in the world, also the most expensive, very hard to keep going. Um, and uh, this name was a, it was a bit of a loss in communication between the Dutch and the English, as well as the natives, the Khoisan, the Klaus and the Zulus, where nobody knew what the Dutch were saying, because they kept referring it to as the Veitmont, Veitmont, and people were, thought they were saying white. So they named it the White Rhinoceros, or Rhino for short. Well, the Black Rhino, well, if this is called the White Rhino, then the other one, which is the Hooked Lipped, well, that must be called the black rhino because this is white. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a funny one, but uh, we now know them as uh, the white and the black or the hooked lipped and the wide mouth. Now he's here, I don't know, he's here to do a bit of mud, mud wallowing and uh, any minute now he should be going down towards the water hole to go and slap some mud over that hot, big body of his. I can see he needs it. It's been a, definitely been some time since he had his last mud wallow. There's not really much mud left on him. And he's usually the one to be covered in mud. When I say covered, a covered is an understatement. It's like he lives in the mud. He, he is the mud. And uh, the mud does all sorts of really good things for him. But the most important is protecting his skin. Leon, yes. If, uh, if push came to shove, now those predators, they've got to be really, really, really confident, you know, and really hungry to go after a rhino because it's a risky it's a risky business you know it's not it, they firstly they've got thick skin so you can't just 
<laughs> bite a leg and expect to to uh, uh, break bones or snap tendons or get to the neck. They can't suffocate them, definitely not. Their mouths are not big enough for that. And they can't bite their noses to suffocate them either. So it's basically one of those things where it, they have to disable the animal before they can do anything. And disabling a rhino or an elephant is no easy task. It really isn't. You've got to have a fair amount of lions as well because you, you've got to have the ones to distract the rhino and then you've got to have the ones to implement the, the disability by biting at the hind legs or trying to get to the spine, which is also not very easy through that very, very thick skin. I almost want to say he's sleeping there, but I don't think he's sleeping there. It looks like it, though. Absolutely amazing. No, good question. So we, as we have the two different species, the hooked and the, the white, those two eat two different types of foods. Now the hooked lift, and this is because the, their mouth structures allow them to eat different foods better. Now you're not gonna find the black rhino on the plains eating grass, and you're not going to find the white rhino in the bushes eating shrubs. The white rhino sticks to the open plains with their wide mouths to mow the lawn, to keep the lawn at a good level, and uh, they love grass. The black rhino sticks to the bushes where their hooked lips will help them wrap around the branches and pull leaves off. So the black rhino is a browser, which means it eats only trees and shrubs, and the white rhino is a grazer which means they only eat grass or different types of grasses. Now, these guys, they like a, a, a bit of both, a sweet felt and a sour felt. There's lots of different types of grasses that they like to eat. I think their favorite would be, or one of their favorites would be the Natal Red Top, which is something that we tend to have a lot of on this reserve, and that's fairly, fairly, uh, uh, well, it's a common like amongst most grazers out there. Uh, Natal red top, very nice and sweet for them. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
he's starting to make a move now. Are we going down to the waterhole? No. You just move to another position where there's maybe no wind? Interesting to see what's going, what he's going to do here. What's your story? What's your plan? I can see he's inching, 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 inching closer. Good afternoon, good afternoon kids, welcome to our vehicle, or should I say welcome to me being off the vehicle. My name is Steve, joined over there by Paul. And what is it that we found over here that is so interesting? Let's have a little look down here in the sand. Um, over here, we have got a track. And another track, another track. And over here, there's some more tracks. Of an animal that lay here and then walked. So it's probably here. Now if I show you in my book over here, you'll see that the track looks very much like this one. Front foot and the back foot of a female leopard. Now sometimes, sorry, Paul, sometimes Oh, I've got to do some form of measurement. I'm going to put the measurement just over there because this is actually the track that we can look at to see what I'm talking about. Some form of measurement and my knife is about 10 centimeters which makes that track 8 centimeters. It's a female leopard. If you look at the back it's got these little lobes in the footprint and four toes and if we look at the track on the ground over here, you'll see that there's one, two, three lobes and four toes. Too small to be a male, so it's that of a female. But what happened here is she came from that direction. She laid down. She probably picked up on the sound or sound of something. And then she quickly walked that way. And then she came back again, and then she went again that way. So this was this morning. So we, over here we've got a track of her going in that direction. And over here we've got a track of her going in that direction. And then over here again, we've got a track of her going in that direction. So two sets of tracks up and down Taylor, you'd like to learn how to track. Well, it is an art, it is a science, and it does take lots and lots of practice. But what happened over here is actually the body of the leopard laid down, probably her back legs over here, and a tail, back legs, the body, and the front legs, one and two, three. She was sitting, looking in that direction. And when she stood up, one foot, two foot, and then she walked in that direction. So we're going to follow these tracks because we would like to find this female leopard. You're keen, and Paul? Yeah. I'm very, very keen. Okay, so one set of tracks coming that way. Three sets of tracks here, up and down. We're going to have to look very carefully to see if we can find her. But we're a few hours behind. A few hours behind. So let's go see if we can manage. 
Okay, well, while we figure out exactly where she's gotten to, let's send you down the road to Chad, who's already got his cats. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Steve, good luck on that uh, leopard tracking mission. So there's a kudu that's come down towards the water. And you can see, have a look at the body language of this kudu. It is staring directly towards where the lines are. And I mean, there's a lioness that's lying just next to that rock. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to keep quiet there. How amazing to hear that noise. So for everybody at home, that's uh, the alarm bark of a kudu warning other animals that there's a threat around. And there goes that kudu. There's actually a whole herd of them um, just off to the right. They've run down into the drainage line now. You can hear they're still alarm calling as they do run away. But how incredible was that? I mean, we were speaking about it being a great opportunity for antelopes to come down to the water to drink on an extremely hot day like this. And to our surprise, there was a herd of kudu that came down and I mean you might be sitting at home wondering why did these lions not go for that kudu but I mean that lioness is right out in the open and lions they will often try and stalk up as close as possible to their prey and then run at their prey so I mean with there being no cover whatsoever between the lion and that kudu it was not a great opportunity and you can still hear that kudu alarm calling uh, Janice you are asking if the kudus will only bark at lions so they will bark at lions but they will also bark at other predators so I mean, a kudu, if there was a leopard that was walking here where these lions are, they would also alarm call. Um, even if there was a cheetah, they would alarm call. So they'll ask for, for the, the bigger predators. Um, it's just to warn other animals that there is a threat around this area and they must be careful. And oh, bless you. The lion just sneezed. But, all these different animals out here, I mean, kudus, and yalas, and parla, monkeys, and baboons, they've all got different alarm calls. So often it's a great way for us to try and to find a predator. So if you might hear an yala alarm call, you know which direction it's in. You can start driving it that, in that direction. And when you see that yala, often that yala is staring in the direction of where that leopard's walked. And it can often give you a very good indication of where that leopard has gone. So we use all the signs. I mean, Steve is busy using tracks to try and find that leopard. Whereas I'm sure he'll turn off the vehicle and listen out for any alarm calls from kudus or nyalas, maybe monkeys. You can see this lioness just got up and went to the bathroom. I was hoping that she maybe was going to come down to the water to have a drink, but going straight back to lie down. <laughs> Such a tough life, being a lion. But I mean, quite incredible. Yesterday, when these lion, when we left these lions, they were still pretty full.
Below the lines, they, it depends on the day, the temperature, how much they've eaten. But on a, any given day, lions can often rest for up to 18 hours in one day. So, I mean, they often will, will rest more than they'll be active. Um, but to give you an example, Bella, these lions here that we're looking at, the Telemati Breakaway Pride, they've been resting here at this waterhole for 24 hours. Um, they were resting a little bit away to our left-hand side longer than that. Um, so, I mean, it's been 36 hours and they've probably moved maybe if 500 meters. So I do think tonight they're going to most likely move. So that's why I was saying a little bit earlier that it might be a, a good opportunity for us to get active lions um, a little bit later on when the sun does start to set. But then also in saying that, I mean, if there's, say for instance, a giraffe carcass or an, even like an elephant carcass, those lions will continuously feed and rest. Um, and it can be four or five days that they might be within the same spot. So it's, uh, it just depends on every situation. I mean, every situation is very different out here in the African bush. But for these lions, they don't seem like they're going anywhere right now. So, I mean, we will stick around here for a little bit, but I think once we do leave these lines here at this waterhole, we'll head towards the, another pride of lions that Steve and myself were with this morning. And they were hunting buffalo last night. There was tracks of a, a small herd of buffalo and the lion tracks over their tracks. And I think this morning it just got a little bit too hot um, for the lions, so they decided to then rest and I mean that particular pride the Nkuma pride they really do love buffalo so I mean you'll read books and things like that and it'll tell you that lions will only hunt in the evenings lions will hunt when they want to uh, lions don't read books <laughs> so they will take an opportunity if they've maybe heard that there was the herd of buffalo like wallowing in the water that might be a good opportunity to go and hunt. So it might be worth going and catching up with those lions. Olivia lions will hunt a lot of different animals. So I mean lions will hunt anything from a an impala or even smaller, a little grey dacre. Um Often zebras or wildebeest. Zebra and wildebeest is quite a good meal um, for lions. Just because uh, it's quite a lot of meat. So especially if the, there's three or more lions, they'll each be able to um, get a sufficient amount of food in their bellies. Whereas if you think about a bigger pride, maybe 10 or 12 or 15 they often will go for something like a buffalo because if they had to kill an impala not all those lions are going to get something to eat so yes they might indeed hunt an impala but they're going to finish that impala off within 10 minutes and they're going to continue moving and see if they can't get something a little bit bigger very interesting to to watch lions on the hunt and on the move how they they move in a pride Tony you are asking if the males are much bigger compared to the females you are 100% correct um, male lions are much much bigger compared to females I mean a male lion can weigh up to 250 kilograms, maybe just a little bit less. Whereas a lioness will probably weigh about 180 kilograms. I mean, that's just a, an estimate. And one of the main reasons, I mean, that male lion is carrying a lot more weight. So if you look at a male lion, you can see that 
His front paws are a lot bigger compared to his back paws. And he's carrying that beautiful big mane of his. Just to impress uh, all the females that are around. But you, you can definitely see quite a distinct difference between males and females. And even at a younger age, you can start telling the difference between males and females. Especially if the cubs are of the same age. You might notice that the male's paws are a lot bigger compared to the females. So I think we're going to leave these lines to rest there in the shade. I'm sh maybe we'll come back a little bit later. We're going to head off to see if we can find the other pride of lines. But for now, let's head over to Eric and see what he's up to. So we've got a what looks like just a dead trees, but not quite just a dead trees. This is a fairly somewhat important, important uh, to elephants. Now, elephants would have broken all of this down. You know how the elephants are. They would have stood here, say this tree would have come like this. They would have reached up one trunk, sorry, look like I'm having to, would have reached up and just pulled it down and pulled it down, continued to munch and munch and munch and munch, and then would have walked away, having killed the whole tree just to have a, <laughs> a little munch. Now, what they've done is, obviously, you can see all the grass is growing around here. There's going to be grass growing through here because of all of the thorns. And the thorns don't kill the grass because they've still got branches that are keeping all of this... Okay, it's very old. Keeping this up. Now, the grass will grow through and an elephant will basically... I, I don't know if I can. An elephant will basically move this whole thing. Ooh, we could be inviting snakes here. Maybe let's not do that. Um, they'll pick up the whole branch, throw it off to the side, and then start grabbing this lovely green grass that has been untouched by other animals because it's been growing all around here. How cool is that? And this is pretty much here, there, 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 there. I mean, there's branches all over the place that have been pushed over. There's a, I mean, in the middle of this field, there's a tree that's completely upside down with the roots in the air and the branches on the ground. But this isn't just an elephant pantry. There's also other animals that will live in here as well. Now you'll find the little field mice will make these little tunnels all over the place and little burrows under the ground. And uh, they've got these little highways that they use to get from one place to another. And, uh, you know, for, for a bird of prey, this is the perfect, perfect spot to come and hang out. Um... Uh, I think it was Morgan or Robin. I can't remember who I heard there. But elephants are incredibly strong. And they have the ability to... Hmm, one big bull elephant, let's say five ton, which is basically as heavy as they get, he can push your school bus. A school bus that can hold up to 40 people in, maybe two of those together. He could push that, you know. But if we talk about the trunk strength, um, anything, so for all of our horse riders, a horse that stands at about 21 hands, which is probably about that big, an elephant, that's a big horse, an elephant can pick that horse up no problem with his trunk and put it down, all the way to something as small as a grain of rice. The elephants are very strong. To freedom is irreversible. We raise our hands and we say, We will be free! Great mass of South African July that humanity.
So welcome back everybody. We're, we've left the Telemates at the water hole close to camp and we're now on our way towards where myself and Steve left the Nkahuma Pride this morning. Uh, just to our right hand side on the other side of this drainage line. And we're just going to make 100% sure that there's no tracks of these lines crossing this road or also looking out for any tracks of those buffalo. I mean, they might have headed down towards that water hole we just came from, or there's a, another water hole further in that direction where they could have gone. And buffalo has been very water dependent. Um, there's a very, very good chance that they've gone to either one of those water holes. So we'll definitely go through to one of those water holes and see if we can maybe find those buffaloes or if not the buffalo, we can find their tracks and see if those lions haven't been following them. Uh, Gina, are you interested in what my favorite animal is? It's a question that we often do get asked as guides, being out here um, looking for all these uh, wonderful animals. and. I would have to say I've got two. I can't uh, say which one is the better one, but leopard is definitely one, and then wild dogs also. Um, leopards just being so elusive and they're always moving in and around thick bushes and one minute you might see them, the next they're gone. And the strength of them is just incredible. And just incredible animals. Uh, I'm a very big dog lover so I mean wild dogs being associated within a, a pack together um, the way they hunt the distances they cover beautiful coats on them I have to say those two animals and panda what's your favorite animal so elephant. elephants so panda says his favorite animal is uh, elephant Cedric <laughs> Cedric went with the classic, the Impala, and for everybody that has been uh, in the bush before you will be well familiar that Impalas are very, very common. Um, you often do see abundance of them out in the bush, so Cedric often will get to then see his favorite animal. So we're not too far away from where those lions were, but for now let's head over to Steve and see how his tracking mission's going. Well, thanks, Chad. Um, we've been tracking our female leopard for a couple of kilometers, and the tracks have gone off into the block. So now what we have to do is to double check she hasn't come out onto this road, very slowly moving looking for tracks, if she does, and then also sometimes looking up in the tall trees is a very useful thing to do. Little overhanging branches can often be quite useful for a leopard. These nice big marula trees that we have here. A perfect spot on a day like this when it's this hot. Find a leopard up one of them. <laughs> Daniel H10, no, we don't. We often don't find them. And um, the success rate is pretty low, I'll be honest with you. But we do our best. Sometimes we find animals we weren't even tracking. That's great. But uh, this morning, we had tracks of the lions that Chad is on his way toward. And we, they went into a block. We went around. And around they didn't come out so we went in we walked in and uh, the other gentleman who was with me found them and we found them so it was a very successful morning and uh, Chad is on his way to those lines shortly so that you can get to meet the Nkuhuma pride they are very cool cats
very, very cool cats. I think they're going to be pretty relaxed this afternoon because it's very hot. Hello, Rice, age eight. You want to know if all animals know how to find trees or climb trees, find trees? Well, leopards are very good at climbing. They are designed for climbing. Lions can climb, but um, it's definitely not their forte. It's not what they're good at doing. And uh, the reason why leopards climb trees is to avoid other predators, such as hyena and lion. And they also climb the tree to take their food up there so that they can save their food. Because a leopard can't eat, normally can't eat most of the meals they have in one sitting. So they like to take them up, cost them a lot of energy to catch it and to carry it up the tree. But up the tree, they can secure it there for a few days four days, say, sometimes five days even, depending on the animal. Now, hyenas can't get them or their food when they're up a tree, but sometimes lions can if it's not very tall tree or not very high up. But leopards learn. Some leopards learn to take their kill. We call it hoisting. Hoist it very, very high up, and then it's them alone. Okay, so when we saw that leopard track before, we all got to see it. Now, if the light is favorable, which I don't think it is, well, it's not favorable. No. We've got some lion tracks here from the other day, but it's, fortunately the light is in the wrong place. That might work. Just to show you the difference in size and why a leopard climbs a tree to get away from these guys. Paul, can you get that one there? I hope you can. I'm sure you can. Yes. Now, once again, we've got a track. You can see this one. You put my knife down. Now, can you see it, Paul? Yeah. Now, here's the pads. One, two, three. And the toes. One, two, three, four. That animal is going that way. Now this knife is 10 centimeters. The leopard track was there on my knife. And this track is all the way over there. Look at that, a male lion, male lion. You can see it's about 16 centimeters. And uh, the back pad over there and the toe is much wider than the back pad on the front foot. Can you see the difference between that? It's probably about a thumb distance between the two. Big male lion and this area over here, can you see all of this elevated sand? Now in a leopard that's normally quite tight, it's normally quite little, but in a lion we get a lot more and we call that negative space and that is a lot of extra space in between the pads of the lion's foot and when their toes push down and the back pad that actually pinches up in between and a leopard, there's space there, but it's nowhere near as moundy as that of a lion. It's a nice big male lion, and he's going the same direction we are, but he is long gone.
Nothing... Nothing sticks out immediately with the naked eye. Maybe get behind some binoculars and see if we can see any further. Maybe something will appear. A clue. One of the biggest clues that elephants give away is their smell. They leave their droppings around everywhere. But it's not just their droppings. Everywhere they've been, you know, like a whole herd, even if you can't see the footprints and you can't smell any droppings, you'll still be able to smell that odor, that elephant odor. One of my favorite smells. And uh, there's no hiding. Once I've got that trail, I'm like a bloodhound. There's not a bloodhound, a pointer. I will find them. Very interesting that it's uh, one of Eric's favorite smells, the elephant odor. But I do see why he says that. But welcome back to Juma, everybody, where we are currently at the last area where we left the uh, Inkahuma Pride this morning. They do seem to have moved um, from this exact spot where they were left. Uh, about half past nine this morning and it was extremely hot so I mean we were speaking about it a little bit earlier that they are very opportunistic and you never know they may have heard those buffaloes and they then might have gotten up and started to move but we will spend a little bit of time um, driving around in this area I might just get out of the vehicle just to see where their tracks have gone just to point us in the right direction and maybe they've headed towards uh, the closest waterhole that might also be an area that we can go and have a look at I know there is another ranger from another lodge coming to give us a hand in this area so double the chance of finding them we're always happy for a little bit of help from everybody else around us might just uh, put Cedric onto the tracks of these lines and allow him to walk and see if he can maybe find the Inkahuma Pride for us. But thanks once again to everybody that, and the kids that were watching the kids drive. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot. And I certainly do hope you join us tomorrow at the same time, at the same place um, for another kids drive has been a great start to the show with some lions, Eric and his uh, the rhino at Amakala, and Steve teaching us a little bit about tracking. Hopefully that tracking does pay off a little bit, and hopefully we'll be able to find these lions that we are looking for. Thanks very much, kids, for sending in your questions once again, and hopefully we will see you tomorrow at the same time and same place but it's uh, goodbye for now This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon, good afternoon, welcome on board the Sunrise 
It's done set. Safari, hello everybody. Rewind a little bit there. Hello, my name is Steve. Join my Paul and Cameron. We're out and about in what is a really warm day today to see what we can find. Now, we have been on the tracks of a female leopard from this morning. I was hoping it was Tlalamba, but um, we've lost them. We've lost them, so we're going to go do a little bit of a waterhole survey, see what's going on at the water, and then we might move back into the area of last tracks a little bit later when it cools down. But as you know, it's Chad out and about on Juma with me, and uh, Eric down in Amakala. And as always, your questions and comments are very important and actually help to keep the show going. So please don't be shy, send through your questions using the Apple website. You can also go to the YouTube chat stream, get your questions in there or join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Wild Earth. It is hot with a capital H. My last drive before a spot of leave. What are we going to see? Wonderful things. Wonderful things, which is a lovely little kids drive there. And a lovely on safari as well. Lenny, let's go! Let's go, Lenny. I'm only joking. Slow down. Let's go. Nice and slow. We're going to check out Treehouse Dam. Uh, why not? Um, Cedric can't because he's not driving this afternoon. So in honor of Cedric, we're going to go check out Treehouse Dam. Purely because it's uh, the general direction these tracks were headed into. And it's a great place to look for elephants. So dam cameras, please do keep your eyes peeled on the dam cam for any sign of elephants for us, please. We would be most appreciative. What are we going to see? And Paul, we're going to find an Apala. That's what we're going to find. Find an Apala. It's one over here as well. Gary70, I hope you enjoyed the tracking segment. I think you were asking what... Paul's got a bit of PTSD with logs now. I just clean, then he cleaned and pour off the back of the vehicle with a log just before. Terribly sorry about that, and Paul. Every night again, you're driving along and uh, there's a log on the side of the road and you just go off slightly just to have a look at a track and then the wheel catches the end of the log, almost if you can imagine standing on the end of a rake, how it comes up, except you're rolling the log. And this was a solid red bush willow log that um, nearly on my last drive decapitated and poor. But thankfully he's got arms of steel and he deflected it like um, Steven Seagal in his most prime condition. And you should have seen the log after. And Paul's okay. And Paul's just fine, everybody. Spare a thought for the hard red bush willow log that got shattered in the process. Wendy has another little mark on it. And Paul, one log zero. <laughs> okay, so Impala's there, are oh, slowly moving towards Trias Dam. They're keeping to the shade. It's a very good idea to keep in the shade today. Well, Kim, they have to feed. So, you know, there's a, there's a time to drink and there's a time to feed. And animals drink very quickly and then leave. They don't hang around the watering hole. It's like putting a target on their back, really. Uh, if you see how we always go to watering holes to, to find animals, the predators do the same. And uh, watering holes are normally quite exposed. And if you've seen around watering holes in the 5 to 10 meter radius, there's almost nothing to eat. So these animals have to move away from the water to feed to find some shade, to ruminate in the shade, and then to slowly make their way back again. They don't provide bar snacks and bar lunches, pub lunches, at the watering holes. So animals have to go and find some food. 
but at days like this, water is important. So let's go check. Let's go see who's watching at the dam. It's going to be a day for lots of snake activity. Sorry, Paul, it's another log. Okay, so I wish there was some wind here just to cool things down a little bit, but uh, Eric's got his fair share of wind down in Amakala, I think. Let's go greet them for the afternoon. Steve, you know what, if you would love some wind, we are more than happy to donate some to you. We've had our fair, fair share of wind, as well as fires and smoke. We've had an awful lot of smoke in this area. Obviously, Eastern Cape is very, very dry at this point, and you can see by the color of the grass. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Eric, your naturalist for this afternoon, joined by Morgan behind the camera, and we are your eyes and ears on this beautiful, beautiful afternoon at Amakala, a game reserve here in the Eastern Cape. Where we are overlooking a little valley, not really a valley, more of a grassland plain. Well, sorry about pulling you away from Eric there so quickly, but look at who we found. Well, everybody, water is the currency of life after all. And if you just get there at the right time, you will find Tlalamba coming down to drink. You beauty. Cedric is going to be kicking himself that it wasn't him who arrived the Trias Dam right now, but I know at the same time it's going to be super stoked for us. This was the objective for the afternoon, everybody. Thank you. We're going to turn around and go back to camp. I'm only joking. We're not going anywhere. We are going to sit right here and lap this up. Queen T for the win. Mpo, was that log in the head worth it? Yeah, yeah. He's, awake now, eh? he's awake now. Yay, Philippe, yay. My only sad point is that we didn't manage to catch it in time for the kids' drive, but that's okay. I think through that whole process you got a bit of an idea of what we were doing and at the same time the tracks heading in a general direction water is necessary gets hot the same goes for Chad now if he's not able to find those lines he knows or Cedric knows anyway the areas they're going to be shade or they're going to be going towards water if it's close enough but they won't be moving very far in these temperatures she's been probably been hanging around here for some time and she's just decided ah, I'm gonna take a gap I'm going to have a drink orchid fairy that was the objective and thank you what a great find before my break we are super super stoked Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
May I shrug want to be you? Say, she looks well fed. She does, she does. I mean, James has just messaged me and um, he said she looks quite, she looks pregnant from where he sits. I can't quite tell with that little forb in the way. That's fine, Jordan, you stay with us. We are happy. Okay, let's see the belly now. Look at that belly. Is she hungry? I mean, is she full or is she carrying some babies? Now, we know she was mating with Mawati in January when I was here. Was it early February? I can't recall the exact date. Some of you will remember exactly what date it was. It was actually just before I left, I can't recall, but um, that would be something to go by. Blacksmith Lapwing is not at all happy with their presence. What a treat, everybody. If you're just joining us live here, on the show, where have you been? You have been missing out on Columba doing the catwalk and drinking what was left of Treehouse Dam's water. There's no more water left, it's now dry. And our hippo has got to go find himself another home. I jest, it is still well watered, as is she. Now she's trying to figure out where's a nice spot to go and hang out. And just underneath that guari tree over there, Tlalamba will do just nicely. Three, two, one. Yes, that's a great spot right there. Right there will do. Okay, stop. She's gonna go back to her tree at the back there. Okay, so, before she goes behind, I'm going to start. She's walking quite gingerly through the... Just keep my eyes on her. Leopard girl, let's hope she has babies. That would be wonderful. I would be super excited. So I'm just keeping my eyes on her. gonna go have you maybe stashed a little kill in your African weeping wattle over there we had you in the other day she's definitely going back towards something otherwise why walk in this heat she's looking at me going are you gonna follow me I know you like to follow me Steve of course I'm gonna follow you my girl of course I am could we say no to that how can we say no to that? She's walking very tentatively. Maybe the ground is very hot. Don't think so. It's almost like she's stalking. Yeah, I think she's got something under this bush here. Yeah? No, she's gonna walk on a log. Now, how would we find her if we didn't have her now? How would we find her? She's walking. The way she led me to her den a year ago, or two years ago now, she walked like this. She was tentative, tentative steps like this. There was no, normally we see her walking. She just, what we would South Africa say, traps through the bush. But uh, she's walking with very delicate steps which is uh, interesting. And when last time she did that, I don't want to say she is doing it now, but last time she did that, she led me to a den. Very, very blessed to have been a part of that journey. Mpo, that was well played, eh? That was well played. Graham, Graham, she's looking really good. She's looking really good. 
Now, I, I don't recall her belly looking like this the other day when we had her, and we were with her for quite some time. Didn't have the same fullness to it. Salamba, where are you going? It's hot. Do you know how hot it is? She must know. Can you imagine having a body of fur like that in this heat? Yes, I know. You're just walking nice and slowly so I can keep up with you, aren't you? dead branch hanging out of that tree there. It looked like it might have been an animal, but it's not. <laughs> Debbie, it, Debbie from London, it has been too long since we've had some mini, proper mini rosettes on Juma. It's been too long for my liking. Okay, I don't want to lose her. Let's go around this bush here. Oh, you're going to go up a tree? Have you made a kill? Is there something here we don't know about? Something on the ground there, perhaps. Very interesting. She's looking up this tree. Ah, oh, you're fine, Jordan. Nothing tricky right now. Just interested to know what her plan is. There's a very nice marula tree here that she looked up, but she hasn't gone up. I don't see anything in it. There are a number, a number of other marula trees. So everyone, I'm no expert at telling whether a cat is pregnant, but her belly does look fuller than it did the other day and we spend some time with her so I feel like she's got meat here I feel like she's got a kill and that's why she's walking back to it otherwise she would have just been hanging by the water doing what the Talamati pride were doing no need to go on a mission cats will walk quite a distance to go back to their food from a drink Sometimes they can stay away for a few minutes. Ah, she stopped under this dead log here. Yeah, I see her there. Come here, okay then, Paul? Mac, you're so glad the Queen showed herself. Well, look at that. If we didn't find her at the dam, there's no chance we'd find her. Now, I've probably got 50% confidence that there's some food here and about. Maybe not exactly under this bush, but somewhere hereabouts. Um, what I've experienced with Columba in the past and with female leopards is that they will have a kill up a tree and they'll feed on it and when they're not feeding on it they'll go down the tree generally um, upwind no sorry downwind of it and then just a little bit away they've got visibility they've got wind direction uh, from the, the other side upwind from it upwind that's right upwind which is actually where we are the wind is blowing towards us. And sometimes what happens is a male leopard comes across a leopard kill and goes up the tree. And if she's on it, she, is, she can be caught on that kill. She's injured. Um, she needs to get away. She can be killed. There's a lot of risks involved if a male leopard approaches and jumps up the tree onto a kill. So it's something I saw Tlalamba do a lot when she was younger. So, no idea right now. We're going to have to keep scanning our trees. It's also possible she's killed an animal that's too big to hoist. And she's got it stashed under this bush here. We've seen that too. A male impala, for example. I'm going to try scan in there with my binoculars.
Now, I know Chad is looking forward to seeing a, a spotted cat. He's really looking forward to seeing a spotted cat. Definitely some meat here somewhere, everybody. We'll probably just have to wait for her to go and feed on it. <laughs> Oliver, she has had a meal, my guess. She's had a meal, and uh, she's a little bit full. So the press is on the diaphragm, which influences the size of the lungs. But at the same time, it's also hot. And if you joined us on the show yesterday afternoon, we started the kids' drive. We had the three Talamartis that were sitting just like she's sitting, mouth open, eyes closed, ears back a little bit, panting heavily. And uh, there's a lot of talk about cats cooling down with their bellies or with their, the pads of their feet, but there's no doubt that there must be a huge amount of cooling that's taking place through the mouth, through the tongue. We know that that's how dogs cool down. It's the major way they cool down, apart from also going into water. But the three Talamatis were, were foaming at the mouth. They were so hot. And here's Talamba, quite similar. Now look at that camouflage. How would you see her? How would you see her? Grooming. Well, everyone, we're not going anywhere. We're going to spend as much time with Salamba as we can. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari.
So it does seem like it's a small little family group. I've only seen three uh, elephants for now. You can see this beautiful big female that we've got in frame now. And then there's a, there's a calf just off to the right hand side. And then I definitely heard another elephant coming just behind her. And so you'll often find small little family groups of elephants, three or four in it. Might be that it's from the same family group that's maybe split off from a, a bigger, larger herd of elephants. And this mother might be taking her youngsters to the close by water or to an area that's very nutritious in feeding. And how beautiful is that now that we can see both mother and calf. Beautiful lighting on them also. Just having a look at us, uh, making sure that we no threat to her or her youngster, but you can see that she is very, very relaxed with our presence. Well, she turned around and we've come to the other side of the log. The, the trees we can see nearby don't have any form of meat in it that we can see. It doesn't mean she's treed whatever she's caught. If she has caught anything which we think she has, we will just have to wait and see. Paul, she took me to a den, and then she lost those cubs. We don't know how many there were. We, we saw them once. It, we saw one cub once, and then we zoned the area, gave her all the space in the world, and then no one ever saw them again. Then she had the next litter, and uh, they got to nine months, ten months or so. They're somewhere around there, and then they disappeared. Um, I wasn't here when all of that happened. And since then, we don't know if she's had any failed attempts, or if she's had some um, litters that have gone unnoticed. There's been talk, there's been conversation. Um, I haven't tracked her to a den since that time, or followed her to a den since that time. It's not to say that she hasn't had, and it's been unsuccessful again. There's a lot that probably goes on that we aren't catching up on at the moment. I am super, super stoked that we found her this afternoon. Treehouse Dam for the win. Now, Cedric's going to hear that, and he's going to go to Treehouse Dam four times a drive for the rest of his life. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find in water, everyone. And we were talking about it. The tracks are heading in that direction. Let's check it out. And we nearly did it live. It was nearly a live segment, except if we hadn't have stopped for those Impala, we would have got it live. Anyway, that's where it works. We still got you to come over very quickly. And what a treat indeed. What a treat indeed. Gary, they can swim. I think any animal you throw into water, apart from us, is naturally able to swim. Um, but uh, they don't like to swim. Cats don't like to get very wet. Uh, I think the tiger has, has evolved to be a wet, loving cat. And some lions we see in the Okavango Delta, and I've only seen in documentaries, they have learned to swim. That's the environment they're in. But I've seen leopards walk, <laughs> walking down the road and our little drainage lines that cross our roads across these drainage lines. There's a bit of water flowing now, and I've seen leopards turn to those little trickles of water and they go 
and hiss at the water. Um, there was some footage of a uh, Cape Leopard down around the university I used to study at in Sarsfeld of a, a female sitting on a rock and her cub jumping around her and the cub misjumped or mistimed its jump and fell into the river and it got out didn't look very happy when it got out but uh, they can definitely swim they can definitely swim um, there are times in when riv rivers are in flood that big cats have to cross um, sometimes they do lions we do see them crossing rivers I don't say they like doing it but in saying that at the same time it tends to be the case that most leopard and lion territories actually utilize rivers especially permanent rivers as a form of a territorial boundary it seems to work really really well there's game paths that normally run parallel with a permanent river a well utilized well demarcated and uh, we generally find uh, leopards will use those as boundaries i was on a, a primitive trail with a bunch of ladies up in the kruger national park when we went to sleep and we'd heard leopards calling female leopards calling from a distance and then slowly but surely everyone was getting ready for bed and going to sleep and the leopards seemed to get closer one from the south one from the north and uh, i woke up i remember very very vividly waking up to hearing a leopard calling very very close by now on these primitive trails we sleep on the ground and one person mans the fire just to make sure that there's no hyenas or anything lurking around and that's done in silence and i woke up to a leopard calling 30 maybe 40 meters away on the rocks and i woke up and saw these two ladies uh, anita and mimi standing huddled together almost crouched down because for some reason they're crouching down does something for fear i don't know and they were shining the light up onto the rocks and there was a female leopard looking at them who was calling and at the exact same moment that happened another female called on the other side of the Luvuva river 60 70 meters away maybe 80 and they were calling to each other we had nothing to do with the interaction the leopards weren't interested in us at all but that permanent river definitely served as the permanent territorial boundary between those two cats and uh, it was such a blessing to have two female leopards joining the woman on the ladies' trail, on the woman's trail. Quite auspicious. So they wouldn't cross that river unless it dried up. And the Levu, the Levu doesn't dry up. But you'll find leopard tracks up and down on either side. It works as a very natural boundary. Um, that's why we often find leopards walking along the roads. Very nice game paths, demarcated. Um, they often are created um, over time by a hippo or other animals like an elephant walking along these game paths a very nice way to to walk a territory and uh, so leopards will just mark the territories out based on that so generally no need to swim no need to cross over a river but if they need to they most certainly can very begrudgingly though okay well the lumber is definitely showing us now that it is hot and we're going to reposition shortly because we found ourselves positioned in a lovely patch of sun. Okay, well, it sounds like Chad has caught up with the Unkohuma Pride. I wonder if you can guess where they are. Welcome back to Juma. Um, I'm glad Steve's still sticking around with that female leopard. And we've left that small herd of elephants and caught up with uh, Uncle Uma Proud, who Steve found this morning. And they just rest in probably 50 or 60 meters away from the waterhole. It's just to their left hand side. And I was just uh, discussing now with Panda and Cedric that this is actually a perfect spot for these lions to be lying. Uh, there's another lioness through there. I just saw all these lions turning their heads to the left and there's uh, another lion that's coming to join them. And so what I was discussing is that this is a perfect spot for these lions to be lying because they're not out in the open like the 
Lions were earlier on in the show, the Telemati breakaway pride. And they were lying out in the open, right on the edge of the water, where these lines that we've got in front of us now are concealed. They're in quite a thick, dense area close to the water, so if anything does come down to the water, they are then able to stalk up to it, get as close as possible to whatever it might be, and then they can then have a good opportunity to hunt that animal. And I mean, it is extremely hot today, so these lions may have moved here for a bit of water, and they've now just rested up. Our march to freedom is irreversible. These terrapins, they, they, yeah, they got to work kind of pulling all flesh off it. It's almost as if she went in there purposely. Um, and uh, they were basically eating away damaged flesh or um, dead flesh, kind of the stuff that's not supposed to be on her body that just doesn't, doesn't help her. It was a bit of blood, but um, it was pretty cool what they were doing. That was also a video that I watched. Yeah. Very peaceful. And nice and sheltered down here as well. Not too much wind. I don't think they're going to move too far from here. They maybe do a bit of feeding find a nice bit of cover to shelter for the night. Not much bird activity this afternoon here. So it's a bit strange, especially for the June forest. Normally it is teeming with bird life.
Dark Bunny, we've been very, very fortunate. I must say, I must say, we have incredibly been lucky. You know, it's not always that we get to see these guys. You know, they 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 can be skittish, you know, and they good with uh, 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 hiding themselves. So in order to be to be able to see them like this at the waterhole, especially so calm, not really worried about us too much, is a privilege in itself. Ali, Bamba from, you know, it all depends on what the wind is doing, but generally, sometimes over 300 meters, 400 meters, they can hear really, really far. I mean, their the hearing is immaculate. So naturally, with good hearing, you can hear fairly, fairly far. Um, basically, double what we can hear. So if you can't hear a dog barking at 500 meters, trust me, they can hear it. They could probably hear it at maybe about 1,000 which is practically a kilometer away. Um, uh, their hearing is very good, and they smell, ooh. <laughs> I can't imagine that would have been nice. Can you see that baby's just snorted, not snort, blown um, <laughs> water out of its nose. But, uh, yeah, like I said, if they can, oh, they can hear very well, and they can smell incredibly well as well. And that's just to make up for the lack of eyesight. She can see us here. We're probably sitting about 50 meters away. She can see us. She can most likely hear me as well as I'm talking. She's looking off to the distance as there were some noises that came from there. A little bit of a snort. Um, but if we moved probably 30 to 40 meters away from here now, possible she may not be able to see us then. It will be a big blur. Sure, these guys are really taking their time to drink this water, savoring it all. That's great. This was awesome. We're going to send you back up to Chad with his lions. I'm glad Eric's having a lot of luck there on Amakala recently with some rhinos. And we're having quite a lot of luck on Juma with the, the cats. And we're still sitting here with beautiful Nkuhuma Pride as they just resting. The sun is slowly starting to set to our west and there's quite a lot of shade that's casted on these lines. And I mean if you have a look at that line Ness on the right hand side she's slowly grooming herself and it's often a, a sign that there might be some activity and I've been fortunate enough to spend not as much time as Cedric has but spend quite some time with the Nkuhuma Pride when I was working at a property a little bit further to our south from here on Mala Mala Game Reserve and got to know the, these lions quite well and they do really enjoy moving in the the last like, hour of light. So I think we're going to keep the vehicle parked exactly where we are right now. We do have a little bit of shade and we're just going to see what plays out. That herd of elephants also wasn't too far away from us. I hope I'm getting this name right, Jordan Pokey. If that's correct, um, very incredible. Um, it, uh, it's been about six months 
since the the last time I got to a picky. So apologies for getting that name wrong, but yeah, it's a, it's very incredible to catch up with the the Uncle Pride. I mean, it was probably last year September, the last time I, I got to see this particular pride of lions and. They actually do hold a, a very special place um, in my heart. There was always a time where, growing up as a guide, I, I really wanted to see um, lions taking down a buffalo. And this pride that's sitting right in front of us now is the, the first pride of lions that I got to see successfully taking down a pride. Uh, I was about to say taking down a pride of lions. That's no good. Uh, a buffalo. And, I remember that sight until the day I die. It was a extremely hot summer's afternoon and we left the lodge quite early to get out to where they were in the far eastern parts of Mala Mala and got there and it was probably 35 or 36 degrees Celsius and I said to the guests, I said we're just going to sit here, we found a nice little spot away from the lions and we could see the buffaloes 100 or 150 meters away. And the guests were saying to me, are we just going to sit here until it gets dark? And I said, most likely. And literally five minutes after we had got there, these lions got up and they started walking straight towards the buffalo. And the wind was perfect, blowing from the buffaloes to the lions. So the buffaloes had no idea that these lions were there. And they followed them for probably five or six hundred meters to a close by waterhole. And as soon as the majority of the herd was drinking at the water the lions ran in from behind and almost chased the buffaloes through this water hole and there was one buffalo bull in particular that was left at the back and these lions took advantage of that and it was an incredible sighting I don't think I said anything to my guests for about 20 minutes while we were watching this interaction go down and it, uh, yeah, it was a very very special sighting so this Prada lines will always be very special to me. So nice to have them right on our doorstep here at Juma. You can see the, those two lines at the back there, they are panting quite heavily, trying to just cool off. But have a look also how that paw is on that lioness on the left.
it would be quite incredible if uh, all these lions had to get up and start heading towards the water and go for an afternoon drink or late afternoon drink and then we would be able to see exactly how many there are but also to be able to see them out in the open. And just going back to the red-billed oxpeck I was speaking about, those red-billed oxpeckers will often land on buffaloes. I mean buffalo or basically any other animals except predators and elephants. And so it might be worth just having a quick drive around to the water just to see if there is anything there. But these lions, their hearing is so acute that if they did hear anything come down to the water, their body language definitely would have changed. And as you can see here, there's been no change whatsoever. So I don't think it is anything. I think those ox pickers, the red-billed ox pickers would have gone to land on those hippopotamus in the water. back everyone well it seems I drove through a spider's web with babies I can see many 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 little spiders and just a quick disclaimer if you're afraid of spiders look away now these are all tiny little things tiny little baby spiders that are are ballooning as we speak do you see them taking off do you see how suddenly some are disappearing now what they'll do is on the, the parent web they hatch from eggs and they'll set out a little strand of silk that almost forms like a kite and that kite will blow and the wind will pick it up and sometimes can actually physically pull the spider up and away and they'll fly we call that ballooning uh, another element is that silk could maybe get a little bit further and could attach onto a branch or tree and then they'll just pull themselves up and away um, they need to disperse after hatching um, otherwise mum can potentially get hungry and want to start eating them so from a very young stage after hatching the spiders need to make their way away so they're all going to make their way away eventually from my my bag and my chair here but we just thought we would introduce you to that because oh her head's up because her head was down and now her head is up and she's giving herself a little scratch and that's my head in case you didn't know Hello, Tlalamba. Your skin is crawling, Crowley. Don't worry, it's only here on the TV. They can't hurt you. Even Paul was excited when he saw them, and not initially, but he's grown used to them, haven't you? Paul, you even started doing your own little video there. They're not out to get you, just tiny little baby spiders that are all make, trying to make their way in the world. I won't tell him poor now that they've all latched onto his light now and all climbing up towards him, but uh, he's looking not too concerned. <laughs> spiders for the win, everybody. Spiders for the win. And they reckon swifts and swallows when they're flying in the sky, gobbling up insects, that a lot of what they actually gobble is ballooning spiders that are flying there, dispersing. Because once the wind catches that kite, um, as anyone who's ever flown a kite that's strong enough to lift their body off the body, off of the floor, um, you'll know how far you will go until the wind puts you down. And some spiders will go through that until they eventually reach another destination. Okay, Tlalamba, where's your food? Where are you going to take us to now? She's growling a little bit. I think she's uncomfortable. Just a little... She's mm. looking to this bush over here. I don't see anything. Katie, could potentially be a big five drive. Except I'm not going anywhere. We're going to stay with her. 
she's going to take us to some meat that she has, and that's going to set Cedric or Chad up with a golden sighting in the morning. And here she's going to come and say hello to us. Sorry if my head gets in the way. The lumber, you're okay. You can walk past us. Hello, my girl. She's still quite hot. I reckon her, her meat is probably right, right over here. I can't quite see it. Hello. Aren't you a treat? Aren't you a beautiful, beautiful girl? She's a beautiful girl. I'm just going to watch her. She's right behind us. I'm not going to start the engine or anything now. Hmm. How magnificent. And Paul, how does that make you feel? A yoba man. A man. It makes him Paul feel a yoba man. <laughs> you got to do the little head shake at the end, and then the car starts. So keep your eyes on her for me, please. Okay, well, while we try to relocate on our cat, who's just going into the bushes there, sounds like Eric might have or might not have found some elephants. Well, Steve, we hope you have some luck with sticking with that beautiful lady. We here we have a beautiful boy. Now, I always tell everybody this is the brother of my favorite elephant, which means he is my second favorite. Booty we have here. A young, young boy. Not too young. And uh, he's indulging himself in what Brother. looks like a... Uh, uh, what is that? A can of wood. Oh, he's feeding himself very nicely. And where's the rest of your family? We've been on a wild goose chase looking for them and you. Oh, we finally found you. Where's the rest of the farm? The fam family. I'd like to know. I suspect they, they are in this valley here where we had them last week. Definitely. That's fine. Well, we'll sit with him for now. It's beautiful. Now he's showing us the backside. I'm hearing movement of somebody else. It's, it's definitely somebody here. I'm not too sure. Could be possible that uh, there's another one somewhere in these bushes that's joined this boy here. What a beautiful afternoon. And an, and, and I'm losing my words here, an eventful afternoon we've had, I think. We've started, we started off very well. And uh, so far, so good after a goose chase or wild goose chase we've come somewhat right lisa yes the elephants are definitely abundant here and uh, we have a fair amount of them and have uh, about 30 
between 28 to 32 of these beautiful African creatures. And uh, we do have the, the, uh, the luxury to see them on a daily, but then also sometimes where we can't see them. Right, we're going to link you over to Chad, and we're going to continue. Maybe we can find the rest of his family. Welcome back to Jim, everybody. Where I was indeed correct a little bit earlier on with those red bulldog pickers coming down to the water. We did just uh, reposition, and we found a small little herd of elephant oh sorry apologies small little herd of buffalo here at the water you can see though i mean you can see it's a quite a small herd of buffalo probably 40 or 50 buffalo that are down here drinking and the lines are off to our left hand side not too far though we can't actually see any lines Right, right at the moment but these lions definitely know that the buffalo are here oh Jordan that's incredible I'm just uh, being told now that we've seen the whole big five this afternoon on game drive maybe I'm bringing the luck to the afternoon sunset safari but how incredible. I mean, we've had a, a jam-packed afternoon already and there could be some interesting things that unfold here on Juma. So I was just saying before I got told that there was a, well, this was the big five. So the, the lines are off to our left hand side and the lines, I can't see any line at the moment, but I'm almost a hundred percent certain that these lions know these buffalo are here and it will take one of the older lionesses she might get up and start to do quite a big loop around oh there's also a pot of hippo just below us where we are sitting and Good afternoon hippos also, apologies I didn't uh, greet you also, but the lioness might wander off to the other side. Okay, I think quickly let's head over to Steve, we'll come back here a little bit later. Well, good luck, Chad. Good luck with your buffalo being hunted by lions. There, we've got an impala that was already caught. If you are not interested or into dead animals or animals being eaten, everybody, this is a live game drive safari where animals sometimes die. Right now, we have an impala being fed upon by Tlalamba. And so if that's not your thing, look away now. But here we go. Thank you, Paul. Now we arrived here. She took us to this animal. Oh, she's eating the, the rumen, everyone. She's eating the stomach. It's quite surprising. You're not normally familiar with the leopard actually feeding on the um, the stomach lining. Oh, that's the stomach lining. The oh goodness gracious! It's not a stomach lining. I don't know what that is actually, but all the bits and pieces of the guts are about to start flowing out. When we got here, the body was bloated, and she started nibbling. And she went in through the rib cage there, and you heard the sound of uh, of the gases being released. And then she started eating the lining there, and now she's going to go back to the rump where she started. A little bit of rib cage, a little bit of fur. Fly driving a bit mad. We know the feeling, Klalamba. Do you know the feeling? Mm. 
Mm. Kimberly Lopez, I think she's going to pluck and remove the stomach and the heaviness of the rumen and digestive system. Hang on a second, everybody. Uh, Darren, where exactly are you? Um, on the drone that's parallel with the power lines in Gary, mate. Okay, just come to Trias Dam, and when you're coming over the dam wall, just drive straight into the bush T Junction. We have 50 meters, maybe 80 meters from the dam south. So, I think, Kimberly, she's going to open that stomach and get all of the intestines, all of the guts out first before she tries to hoist it. There's an enormous amount of weight that that generates, and she's not really going to want to eat a lot of the stomach. She will probably eat the internal organs. The, the dressed weight of an impala is 60, 70 kgs, and undressed with all the internal organs can reduce it quite a lot. I don't know exactly how much. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. Hello everyone, well, we are still here with the Queen of Juma, dining on her impala. We were certain, almost certain, when we found her that there had to be some form of food, the way she was moving and behaving. And uh, so there was, she's led us to this impala kill that no doubt she made sometime during the day. being 
very vigilant. It's a dangerous situation she finds herself in if she's not vigilant. If anything did happen, Aina or other li or lion, she'd just move. She'd sacrifice the kill, she'd be out the way, and whatever predator came in would go straight for the meat. If she felt like she could compete afterwards, she'd come back. But initially, she'll always move off. I do hope uh, Tlalamba is able to keep that carcass and hopefully she's able to hoist it in a nearby tree and then it can be off the ground and safe from lions or hyenas. So we are still sitting here at this waterhole with this herd of buffalo and there's been zero movement from the Nkahuma Pride off to our left hand side. And I think that the lions are waiting till a little bit later on. I mean, buffalo, they don't have an extremely good eyesight at night, where lions' eyesight is phenomenal at night time. And also often what would happen is buffalo will often have a drink, being very water dependent, they'll have a drink and they might then go find a nice little spot to rest for the evening. And you might find that that might be then the best opportunity for these lions to hunt. And also if the, these lions do move under the cover of darkness, the chances of them getting spotted is a lot less compared to if they had to move now. But we've got a perfect spot where we are. We've got the pot of hippos in the water, the buffalo herd as well as a proud of lions to our left hand side. So you can see there's these buffaloes are quite weary of coming down to the water to drink and it's not saying that they know that the lions are here but you always find when buffalo herds do come down to drink that they know they are quite vulnerable so that's why you'll that's why you'll see that they're spending a little bit of time on the dam wall making sure that there's no threat around and then coming down to drink and as they do slowly start to move down to drink I'm going to send you across to Eric who's got a herd of elephants in Amakala Oh, we finally came right. We heard a little noise and that noise that I heard when we were sitting with that big boy Booty actually was a couple more. Look at that little bow wow. Look at him. Oh. So, and he just got uh, full use of, or oh, maybe probably doesn't have full use of the trunk, but uh, has got majority of control there. It's taken some time as well to get full control of that uh, appendage. Or the proboscis, as it's called. That is the big lady, Cooper. She is the oldest elephant on the property. She is also one of the matriarchs for C family. That's why her name starts with a, a C. Cooper is, she's 49 years old. So this year would be the big 5-0 for that beautiful lady. And all the other matriarchs are just underneath her, really. Aletisha and Baluleka. Baluleka's 46 this year and Aletisha is 
43. Yes, 43. Going on 44 and 47. Amazing. Look at that little bit. Oh, it's a little bum. Oh, the sunlight catching these guys is absolutely amazing. Dusty, that little one is unbelievably adorable and still, still is adorable. Oh, my goodness. You know? It's going to be cute for a very long time. But I hate to steal the baby's thunder. As soon as there's another baby elephant born on this property, all the attention will shift to those babies. But for now, they are in the spotlight. This isn't all of them. This looks a little lot of C family and a bit of A family there. I don't know where B family is. These guys have done an awful lot of walking today as well. Wow. Um, from where they started in the morning, from where we were told they were at midday to where they are now. Goodness. Jelly Bee Eddie's make the drive so much enjoyable. You know? These guys make me so happy. Over the moon. Little baby, oh goodness. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived. The 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward. And the 31st of March, we'll see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth.
These guys are moving further and further away. And we are still in the absence of B family. Now, it's not uncommon and unheard of that uh, this happens, where uh, the families will split up. It happens actually fairly, all the, uh, fairly often, you know. Um, may have been a disagreement with something, and it's possible the matriarch of B family, Baluleka, may have taken them a different route. But, uh, yeah, there aren't very many babies in B family or young babies at the moment. So you'll find that they are sort of happy to be off isolated by themselves, whereas C family and A family are the ones that have the babies. So those families being alone or those females being alone on their, on their own without, uh, without other members around is very risky for those babies, and they know that. So they'll try and stick together as much as possible. So things are slowly starting to unfold here on Juma. There's one of the lionesses you can see in picture that's slowly starting to look interested in this herd of buffalo. <coughs> Excuse me, the buffaloes have had their drink and they slowly are moving off away from the water. And this might be a good opportunity for these lions to start to follow them. The sun has dropped, uh, dropped behind some cloud cover to the west. So it is starting to get a little bit dark. As you can see the body language of that lioness. She looks like she means business. And how exciting is this? I'm just waiting to see if there's going to be other lions that are going to follow her. So as she does move there, you won't probably won't get another view of her as she appears behind this tree. She's going to go behind the dam wall, and it's quite a dense area there. Quite a dense area there where she she might start to head towards those buffalo. Just gonna pan towards where the, the buffalo are. You can just see there one or two on the right hand side of that tree. <laughs> Canon girl, I uh, also am rooting for these uh, Inkuhumas to do what they do best. Just apology. Apologize in advance. I'm just going to radio. There is another vehicle in the sighting. So there is also now another lioness that's up to the, the left hand side there. Crazy camouflage pandas. Doing some great work here. You can see there's another line is just off to the right of screen. Leopard girl, that would be incredible. What a first afternoon it's already been. But then to see a buffalo hunt would be incredible. Go ahead for chat. Which station is approaching Buffalo Sock Dam? So I'm just looking now where those lines were, we won't be able to see, but it sounds like there's an elephant 
that's approaching where the lines were, which has maybe forced these lines to get up one by one and start moving towards that buffalo herd. And they are looking very, very interested in that herd. But I would also move away from the elephants. Jelly beans, I couldn't agree more. I'm having an excellent first afternoon out here on Juma Private Game Reserve. And I look forward to the next couple of drives on Juma. It's all happening. Steve's last drive with the leopard on a carcass. And now the Nkuma Pride slowly moving towards a small herd of buffalo. Just the cherry on the top would be if these lions had to run after this herd of buffalo. So there is one of the lionesses now that's we're gonna get into frame now. That's looking like she wants to get onto the dam wall. Those buffaloes are slowly grazing away from the water and so it might be her opportunity to get a little bit closer to those buffaloes. The wind is also slowly starting to swirl which isn't in favor of these lions because if those buffaloes do smell this pride of lions they incredible animals they'll all come together and often look in the direction of where that small is coming from and try and protect those youngsters in the middle this is very very special all coming to you live from Juma also I don't really know where to look there's the buffaloes are moving there's lines that are slowly moving towards the one on the dam wall that we've got in picture now one by one and then also a beautiful sunset how incredible very very special Leopard girl, you are 100% correct. They all seem very, very interested. I mean, have a look there at the movement of these three lions. They looking directly where those buffaloes are, and I mean, looking at them, they seem very hungry. They don't have uh, very big stomachs like those lions we started the show with. And so I'm sure they are looking for something big to eat. I mean, it is, after all, a pride of 10 lions here. So they're going to need something substantial in order to feed all of them. So it's quite incredible. The the one lioness that's on the dam wall by herself might be the older lioness of this group and she's almost leading the hunt and you might find that she'll make the move up towards the buffaloes and the other lions then might separate they might go some left some go right and they might try and then surround the buffalo and one of them will chase that herd into the others where they'll then have the best opportunity. How beautiful is that picture there? Lions and the beautiful sunset to the west. So we're gonna stick right here, but for now let's head over to Steve and see what the updates on Tlalamba is. Well, welcome back. She's moved away from her carcass and gone back to the same tree that she was sitting under for quite some time. 
I think she likes this tree. Now you can probably see there's a vehicle in the background. We are joined by another vehicle. This is the best angle. So she's moved a good 30, 40 meters, 50 meters from where she has that kill. And uh, she's going to lose it. She doesn't do anything about it soon. She fed for some time and then she lay down. The impala male is a large prey animal for a leopardess. It's probably say it's as big as they go. To successfully hoist one, that is that is true success. Mm. In Matthews she has a very nice size kill, but with the wind that's blowing, it's very likely that it's going to be detected by some other predator. She could be lucky. It's happened before. Let's quickly get a chat. So it's all happening now. The one lioness, the older lioness, is now headed towards those buffalo that you can see in picture. There's also a youngster that's drinking a young buffalo. So you might find that she might chase the youngster into the water. But we'll just watch and see what unfolds here. There's also that small herd of elephants that's come towards the water to our left hand side and oh there we go there we go oh running for the youngster okay let's uh, get going see what's going on here Sorry, elephants. Sorry, elephants. Yeah. Yeah. I can see now there's one buffalo bull. There's one buffalo bull that now these lions have tried us around. Oh, it's now running back towards the the herd. That's often one of the buffaloes that these lions will try and take down. A lone buffalo by himself. It's uh, all happening down here at this waterhole. So I mean you can see these lions they're now definitely going for these buffalo and I mean you saw that lioness she was she was trying to go for the younger calf. How special is this? Couldn't have asked for a better first afternoon here on Juma. And so the the, the buffaloes, you can s they're just ahead of us. And what also might happen is the buffaloes might chase these lines. So I might just move a little bit further back just to allow space for these lines in order to run if they do come towards the pride they're out there Panna as you can see now that this herd of buffalo is coming towards the lions there is a another ranger that is in the sighting with us at the moment
Fricky, indeed, very, very exciting times. And then there's so much going on around this water, I don't actually know where to look. But you can see these lines are slowly moving away from the buffalo. There's uh, some buffaloes that are chasing some of the lines off to the left. And so what you might find is these lines might move away from the buffalo. And then there's a big bull coming now. So I'm just going to stay exactly where I am just to not make too many sudden movements and to force the lines to run in a direction. I'm going to try and turn the vehicle once this buffalo does move past us. And there is some other incredible animals. There are also some other animals coming down to the water. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. So we're going to stick around here. We're going to send you over to Steve just while we reposition the vehicle. Action, action, action. Well, Chad, you wanted to land her in Juma with some action. You did so very well. well we've got Lalamba here on her log. There she is. And the queen. It's a nice breeze blowing now, it's probably helping to cool her a little bit.
Time to take a deep breath, everyone. That was probably quite exciting, what you were witnessing with Joe there. Something I've been wanting to see for ages. It's see off the charts indeed. I think I drove out this afternoon and said, what do you think we're going to find? And I actually said to Chad this morning, if I find Nguma Pride this morning on a buffalo kill, I'm going to go there as well. I'm going to go there and spend time. And then, well, we found them, but not on a buffalo kill. Well, the lions will be doing their thing. And Chad actually said to me, Steve, if you want to, he'll do the lions during the kids' drive, and then I can go there after. And I said, no. I'm going to go find Columba. I was quite adamant about that. Super stoked that we did. I think one of the kids said, how often do you find the animals you're tracking? And I said, the average is very low. <laughs> very, very low. And so now Chad's had a great afternoon, and so have we. So have we. What else could unfold on this drive? Should there be no need to wait for a last minute anything? It's all happening. Well, there's still more to happen, I'm sure. Kuhumas are still busy. Talamba is taking a nap, but she has a kill that she has not addressed correctly. I'd be much more comfortable if she had at least tried to take it up a tree, at least try to disembowel it to lighten its load. She hasn't. Well, she, she knows what she's doing, hopefully. Well, we haven't been seeing many hyenas around at the moment. They seem to be on a bit of a sojourn. I'm not sure where. But uh, she needs to do something about, about her kill. It's over there. The wind is blowing now. I mean, it's not blustering, and the kill isn't elevated. But we'll see what she does. Maybe she's just getting some strength. Maybe she's got another one. I've had that before. Maybe I find a leopard. I mean, she did walk here, look up in a couple of trees, and then walk over there. I've had that before with a leopard that's got more than one kill, multiple kills around water. And uh, sometimes they'll sacrifice one because they've got another one nearby. Their energy, they can't help themselves when it comes to catching. Sometimes they can't really be asked to try to do anything with it. But it'd be in her best interest to hoist it up a tree so that it can stay there for days to come and give you all wonderful sightings. Well, talking about wonderful sightings, Chad is having one of them. Indeed, that was very wonderful. Um, I don't think... It's over to be honest, but that herd of buffalo is still off to our left hand side. I mean, you can see the lines, how they're all looking in that direction. And the buffaloes will most likely just continue feeding now away from the water. They've chase the lions away but these lions I think this is only the beginning being here and it's starting to get to a perfect time where these lions are going to be able to now follow 
Apologies for the vehicle noise. There's another ranger joining us at this fantastic sighting. So what I'll say now that the, the lions will most likely follow these buffalo into the night. It's much better hunting opportunities. And when it is dark for these lions, with their ridiculous nighttime eyesight, and it might be also a little bit easier for them to get one of the buffalo or one buffalo from the herd uh, that might be off to the right hand side of the herd or a little bit separate I should have said from the herd and that's when it's a good opportunity for them to all run in and that one lioness was by herself when she ran at those buffalo and so it wasn't the, the greatest opportunity. If there, there were other lions around, I think they might have even been able to get that youngster. But as we did start up, it sounded like the lioness had one of the, or had that maybe that calf down. Um, had that uh, buffalo calf down, but then I think that uh, bigger bull then chased the lioness off. Jordan, please, why don't you just repeat uh, that name? Holly, indeed, what a picture. Beautiful, that herd of elephants now moving away from the water. All these lions finally out in the open. Everybody around us doesn't know what to say. Spectacular. Also amazing how these, <coughs> excuse me, how these lions are all looking directly at us. It's not that they're looking at us. They know exactly where that herd of buffalo has gone. It's almost quite surreal being here. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior, for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
welcome back everybody the lions are still death staring those buffaloes that have moved off to our left hand side and it's I was saying it's uh, surreal to be here in this moment beautiful lighting on these lions and they're all staring right at that herd of buffalo I think these lions and buffaloes are going to have a, a long evening ahead of them for the both of them the lions looking to get a meal and the buffaloes trying to keep the lions away I'd love to be able to spend the whole evening following uh, this pride of lions as they do look for their next meal. Apologies for hearing the vehicle noises, the rangers are just uh, repositioning around us, but it's a sighting that you almost just want to keep quiet for a little bit and just take in the scenery and everything that's just happened here on Juma. Leopard girl, I couldn't agree more. Very, very exciting. The adrenaline was through the roof while these lions were chasing that herd of buffalo. And it just brought back that sighting I was telling you <laughs> about a little bit earlier on. The first buffalo kill that I saw. Uh, these lions, when they took down that buffalo in Mala Mala. And I think definitely tomorrow morning it might be a a bit of a fight between myself and Cedric to see who comes and looks for these lions. But we are quite close to the northern boundary of Juma. And if these uh, buffaloes do continue, they might then head out of Juma. Okay, Bezos, an amazing drive. 100% summed up. I think not even not just on Juma. Uh, Eric and Amakala had an incredible time with Lafana's a beautiful herd of elephants. Steve on his last drive before he heads on leave. A beautiful female leopard with a kill, and then to see the Nkuma Pride chasing a herd of buffalo with. Uh, herd of elephants in the background drinking couldn't have asked for a better first afternoon out on Juma and I do look forward to the rest of my stay here at Juma I hope everybody thanks very much to everyone for sending through your questions and comments I've loved uh, interacting with you but fortunately it is coming to the end of the show and I hope everybody has a fantastic evening further. And I'm sure everyone will be on the edge of their seats tomorrow morning, waiting to see what happens throughout the night. But for now, from myself, Panda, and Cedric on the back, thanks very much, everybody. And have a fantastic evening. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. <laughs>